So, believe it or not, one of the biggest things that plagues a lot of the new people coming into the hobby is you trying to figure out how to use like the Betaflight, Butterflight, iNav configurators. Now, a lot of us that have been using it for years are familiar with it, and if anything, we think it's kind of stale, but you know, we know where everything's at, we know how to click this, turn this on, all that kind of stuff. So the guys at Helio have been working on a configurator called Pegasus, which is going to kind of like self-automate a lot of things. It's got a nice fresh look to it and everything like that. Now I downloaded Pegasus a couple weeks ago and I've been playing around with it a little bit. I was going to make a video on it, but it's still in development, but they've made massive improvements where I think a normal person uh, that is in the hobby and kind of familiar with stuff can just kind of go right through it and there's plenty of help available on their discord and slack as well but let's take a look at it here and I'll show you exactly what's going on and how things kind of work here as of uh, the date of this video right now so if you do a Google search for Pegasus github Helio spring github you will get the actual Pegasus download from there and it'll have a self installer on it go ahead and plop it on your desktop it depending upon when you get your helio board or which one you have you might also still need to use the butterfly configurator in order to load a newer target on it that Pegasus can recognize so you might go ahead and you will start Pegasus and if you plug in your helio and it either sits here like this or if it comes up to a screen that is just for CLI you can try to just type uh, BL and try to get it to automate into bootloader mode but I couldn't get it to work so what I needed to do was go ahead and hook the board up to the butterfly configurator and flash a new version of firmware on there and just because we're talking about making this easier for people I'll just go ahead and show where that is and a lot of people should be familiar with this if not no biggie just go ahead and select one of these firmwares here click load firmware online and then flash and your new board should automatically go into bootloader mode and it should flash no problem then once you have that loaded on your Helio board, you can go ahead and start up the Pegasus and go ahead and just connect the board. And when you connect the board, it's going to go ahead and you'll hear the little ding and it will auto detect. And the first time that you upload that way, you're probably not going to see this kind of stuff. Uh, what you're going to do is click up here and then click on version info and you will see that you more than likely have your software version here but your IMUF version will be like $9.99 so what you'll need to do is just go ahead and flash that so let's go through the individual processes real quick so let's say that we want to go ahead first and flash the latest version of Butterfly for the Helio Spring, which by the way, if you look up here at select firmware, you can select race flight, butterfly, or beta flight. So we'll just focus on uh, butterfly, but we can take a look at race flight here real quick. So there are a couple, just one version of race flight here, and there's some settings down here that they will tell you to go ahead and put in. So you can flash race flight on there if you want to. Butterfly right here. And we'll take a look at beta flight real quick just because some people might want to use this just to run beta flight. And you can see that they have the newest version of beta flight 352 for the Helio there. But we're not here to talk about that. Let's go back up here and select butterfly. Helios, Helio spring as our target and the newest version always want to erase the flash start all over clean so let's click flash here 
and you, it's going to sit here for about mm, a minute or so and it's going to download everything it says it's performing a mass erase and then it's going to download and flash everything for us so we'll be right back when that is complete so now that the flash is complete it's going to go ahead and cycle through a connect and a disconnect and what you would actually see next right here is you would see IMUF needs updated. So what you would do is simply go back to version info right here. It might say 999. Click on that. And then this is where you can select what version of the filtering that you would like to try. A lot of people are on Caprica and Odin. And of course, in between there, there was Starbuck. And now everybody is really pumped about the Starbuck FU fully unleashed. And here's all the change log information, which is really cool. So we got all that. And all you would do is go ahead and select what version you want and click flash. And then it is going to put everything into another special kind of DFU mode, I guess, that flashes everything with the actual F3 that's on the Helio boards. So this doesn't take as long. So we got a little message that said it was done and now it's going to reboot. And that is it when it comes to flashing. So you can see here that we kind of can move around and change the board orientation and that kind of stuff. If this isn't working for you, first thing you want to do is just go ahead and stay on this screen. Click on calibrate accelerometer. It's going to go through its thing and get that done for you. Then what you're going to want to do is the orientation assistant. So you're going to click on that. It's going to reset everything with the gyro and it's going to go ahead and ask you to lay it flat and click on the image when you're done. So we'll go ahead and do that. And Tim said he's, you know, going to be updating this with like real pictures and everything like that. So it'll be really nice. Now we're going to point the nose of the board down and click on the image again and that's it we're all done so we click on finish here and now we should be able to see that the board is going to move around and follow everything that we need so as you can see we're moving around it can figure out all of our orientation and everything it'll tell you that it's not flat all that kind of good stuff now I don't have this in a quad right now, but at this point, if you are all wired up correctly and you think you're good to go, you can go ahead and go through the motor assistant and it'll go ahead and help you figure that kind of stuff out. So I'm just going to click on all this stuff here and then skip calibration and then click finish. But this is where if you had motors wired up wrong, you would be able to go ahead and change them. Receiver assistant, this is where you can actually go ahead and set up what kind of receiver you have. Works great and have no problems with it at all. I use Crossfire, so it's pretty simple. And so that's it when it comes to the main page. Also, you can type in your craft name here. So if I go ahead and type in my flight handle click save and it'll go ahead and save and reboot that all right so let's get into the meat and potatoes here so we've already done everything here in the version info we've done our pre-flight checks and here is your PIDs where we are all used to this kind of screen in the older type of configurators this is where we can change our loops and all of our pids and all that kind of stuff uh, you see all kinds of cool stuff that's built into here as far as like adding in different TPAs and rate styles now which is very awesome motors and layouts there's all kinds of information in here some of it you will need to change most of it you want again a lot of this stuff is going to be changed and automated and all that stuff so you really should only have to work with a couple things up here though.
this is where you set your channels as far as what's going on here's all the different things that you can pick from right here and then of course you can assign your channel right here you do have to drag the sliders around a little bit differently so make sure that you are doing that so it captures the area that you are looking for I guess they are going to because there's they're kind of laid over top of each other here so that's going to be fixed I think so they look a little bit more like this so everybody can kind of recognize that you need to do this instead of you know them laying on top of each other like this so be careful with that uh, let's see rates uh, so we got a separate screen here to play with rates which is really sweet because you can see that if we want to pick beta flight or race flight rates and believe it or not yes they are different if you've never used anything before you can go ahead and play around with that and it's got this really cool graph that as you change your actual rates so let's like change the roll rate to two it'll actually show you ex what is going on on the graph so this is kind of like the graph that's in beta flight except you're only seeing one piece of it you know when they do the left to right on beta flight all you're seeing is just the opposite of it so it's really all you need right there filters this is where you can actually go ahead and input and change all your filters shouldn't have to do anything stock just go ahead and fly and see how things go but of course you can always get in there and play around if you want to voltage and current this is all set up changing your scale that type of stuff no big deal there here's our ports tab which you can see it's already set up crossfire for us on port number two of course we can always go back in and change that if I had a actual receiver hooked up to it during the initial calibration it would have auto detected that and set that up for me by my um, by itself uh, the receiver tab this is where you can also set up things that we're kind of used to like turning on telemetry that kind of stuff and of course the receiver assistant is right there if you need it Here's your protocols, you know, whether you're using SBUS, that type of stuff. And as you go through it, I mean, at first glance, it might look a little complicated and like there's too much going on, but, you know, it's fresh. There's going to be a lot of stuff changing, so I really like it. OSD, you can start turning stuff on. They got a nice, cool picture right there that kind of shows you what, what's going on with everything. Got to kind of figure out where to put that stuff, drag it around signal type NTSC of course so let's turn that back off and then turn that back on so that way we have uh, a good place to put it but it's nice representation of how everything goes um, down here is your end screen summary results so probably need to name that to make that a little bit clear for everybody there's also fonts you can change uh, GPS all the different things that you want to change so all of your uh, rescue uh, stuff is all right here so you don't have to go into the CLI and start playing with that stuff in beta flight here's all the different features that we're kind of used to that we turn on and off that's under the configuration tab in but in uh, beta flight set up our VTX we can go ahead and set that stuff up right off the bat you can also turn on the legacy smart audio support right there if that's even a thing still I'm not sure there might be some VTX's out there that still require it box logging of course this is where we can go ahead and record all that and then if you go into advanced <clears throat> advanced has a lot of stuff built into it most of it you will not have to use but it pretty much is putting almost every CLI command in beta flight butterfly into a screen so you don't have to go in there and like type that stuff out so beta flight 351 352 some people might not play with the dynamic notch settings but normally i always have to pull up like the wiki and look at the instructions to learn how to what cli commands to copy and paste and type well 
you know they're right here now so all I have to do is just change the numbers I don't have to worry about typing in the CLI commands or anything else like that so that's pretty much a look at Pegasus and where it sits right now very cool pretty excited about that it's obviously cold in fall and 20 degrees out right now so it's more like winter so I'm taking my time as far as like gathering up some more parts to throw this board into I'm pretty happy with my setups right now and I don't really want to start ripping things apart just to test out uh, firmwares and all that kind of stuff so I will be keeping an eye on this I'm always looking in on the discord and trying to help people out a little bit and see what's going on so hopefully this video will help you guys out and maybe encourage you to give it a try so we will talk to you later